A storage tank contains two moles of argon, three moles of oxygen, and five moles of nitrogen. If the volume of the tank is one meter cube, find the total pressure exerted by the mixture of gases at 300 Kelvin. Right? So, what we are going to use is the Dalton's law of partial pressures, which say that the total pressure exerted by a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the pressures exerted by the individual gases themselves. And to calculate the pressure exerted by individual gases, we are going to use the ideal gas equation which says PV is equal to NRT. V for all the gases is nothing but the volume of the container in which the gases are present and that is given to be 1 meter cube and T the temperature at which all the gases exist is 300 Kelvin according to the problem. So all we have to use is the Dalton's law of partial pressures and to find the partial pressures we use the ideal gas equation. So let us begin. So we have 2 moles of AR, 3 moles of O2 and 5 moles of N2, all of them at 300 Kelvin and all of them occupying a volume of 1 meter cube. So the total pressure will be pressure due to AR plus pressure due to O2 plus pressure due to N2 and PV is equal to NRT. So P is equal to NRT by V, right? So, as far as AR is concerned, N is 2, R, T is 300, we will substitute it at the end, by V for all of them is 1 meter cube, plus for O2, it is 3 moles, R, T by 1, and for N2, it is 5 moles, so it is 5 R, T by 1. So 2RT plus 3RT plus 5RT, it is nothing but 10RT, that's the total pressure. R is 8.314 and T is 300 Kelvin, so 10 into 8.314 into 300 is what we need to calculate. So it is 3000 into 8.314 and when you make the multiplication, you get that as 24942 Newton per meter squared. Yes, this is the required answer for this particular question. 24942 Newton per meter squared is the total pressure exerted by the mixture of these three gases as mentioned in the problem. So, which is the option that supports our answer? Yes, sir, it is option A. The rate of diffusion of two gases A and B is in the ratio of 1 is to 2 and that of B and C are in the ratio of 1 is to 8. Then the rate of diffusion of C with respect to A is. Interestingly enough to solve this problem you don't even have to know what rate of diffusion is. We will discuss it in the coming problems but for this particular problem all you need to know is Ra by Rb, if I denote R, small r as the rate of diffusion, according to the problem, Ra by Rb is 1 is to 2 and Rb by Rc is 1 is to 8 and what they want is Rc by Ra. So it is just a problem in simple ratios, isn't it? So we need RC by RA. So what I'm going to do is write RC by RB using this particular equation as 8 by 1 and RB by RA using the first set of information as 2 by 1 and then multiply them. So I'll have RC by RB into Rb by Ra is equal to 8 into 2, 16 divided by 1, isn't it? 
RB cancels and what are we left with? RC by RA, which is exactly what is asked for in the question. And that turns out to be 16 is to 1, which makes it option D as the correct option for this particular question. So the answer is option D, which is 16 is to 1. The time taken by a certain volume of a gas to diffuse through a small hole was 2 minutes. Under similar conditions, an equal volume of oxygen took 4 minutes to pass. The molecular mass of the gas is, and the options are 32, 16, 8 and 4, or of course all of them in gram. So now we have a gas and oxygen, both diffusing through the same hole. And a given volume of this gas does that in 2 minutes and oxygen does that in 4 minutes. And we need to calculate what would be the molecular mass of the gas. For that, we need to know two important info. What are they? First one, the rate of diffusion is nothing but the volume that escapes in a given amount of time. So it is volume divided by that particular time taken for that volume to diffuse. And also, the rate of diffusion from the theory is directly proportional to 1 by square root of the molecular mass of that particular gas. So these are the two important things that you need to know. Now, as far as the gas is concerned, a given volume V of it escapes or diffuses in 2 minutes and the rate of diffusion is V by 2 which is proportional to 1 by square root of molecular mass of that gas which is what is asked in this particular question and as far as oxygen is concerned the same volume of oxygen diffuses in 4 minutes so it is V by 4 and that is proportional to 1 by root of molecular mass of O2 which is 32 gram right now all we have to do is take the ratio so the proportionality will get, will get converted into equality so i'll have v by 2 divided by v by 4 so when i take the ratio v and v will cancel so i'll get 4 by 2 and on this side i'll have 1 by root m divided by 1 by root 32 so i'll have root of 32 by m upon rearranging the terms i'll have root m is equal to root 32 by 2 i can take the 2 inside the square root and make it root of 32 by 4 which is 8. So root m is equal to root 8. So m, the molecular mass of the gas is nothing but 8 gram. That, my friends, is the required answer for this particular question. m is equal to 8 gram. And which is the option that matches with our result? Yes, it is option C. In Van der Waals equation of state of the gas, the constant B is a measure of. Well, we have P plus A by V squared into V minus B is equal to RT as the equation or the Van der Waals equation of a real gas of one mole. For one mole, this is the equation. So here A by V squared is the pressure correction term and B is the volume correction term. And we have written V minus B where V is the volume of the container and why are we subtracting it with B? Because the gas molecules also have a size and B refers to the average size of the molecules of one mole of the gas. So B here represents the volume correction term. So the actual volume available for the molecule of a gas to move around is the volume of the container negated with the average size of the molecules of the gas itself. So B represents exactly that. So B here represents the average size of the molecules. So let us see which option makes sense. Option A, intermolecular collisions per unit volume, definitely wrong. Option B, intermolecular attraction, no. Intermolecular attraction is actually represented by A. That A by V squared, A represents the intermolecular attraction. 
and option C volume occupied by the molecules yes that's the correct answer and option D intermolecular repulsions there are no repulsion there is only attraction and even if there is an attraction B does not represent it so the correct option is option C right so the answer for this particular question is option C the value of A in Van der Waals equation for the gases O2, N2, NH3 and CH4 are 1.35, 1.38, 4.16 and 2.25 respectively. The gas which can most easily be liquefied is. Now how do we understand this? So how does the value of A tell us whether the gas can be easily liquefied or not. For that, let us write the Van der Waals equation of state for a real gas for one mole, which is P plus A by V squared into V minus B is equal to RT. Now, B is the volume correction term, so that's why we have V minus B. We are not interested in that in this particular question. We are interested in the first term in the product, which is P plus A by V squared. A by V squared here is the volume, uh, the pressure correction term. I'm sorry, it's the pressure correction term. So why has the pressure to be corrected is because whenever a molecule is just about to hit the wall, why? Because how do we define pressure of a gas? It is the average force per unit area exerted by the molecules of the gas on the walls of the container. So whenever a molecule is just about to hit the wall of the container, if we neglect the intermolecular forces of attraction, then it is going to hit the wall with one particular speed. But if intermolecular forces are to be taken into account, then a molecule which is about to hit the wall of the container is being attracted by a bunch of molecules behind it via the intermolecular forces of attraction. Hence, the pressure will be changing. So, we'll have to introduce a pressure correction term and that is A by V squared. So, A here kind of measures the strength of the intermolecular forces of attraction. Now, if the intermolecular forces of attraction are very, very strong, then it is easy to liquefy that particular gas. Why? Because what are we doing during the liquefaction process? In gases, the molecules are moving freely around, but in a liquid, they are all brought closer together, right? And there is only oscillatory motion and there is no free random translational motion in a liquid. So if the intermolecular forces are very, very strong, it is easy for us to bring the molecules of the gas close together in order to liquefy the gas. And what measures this intermolecular forces of attraction? A. So greater the value of A, implies stronger will be the intermolecular forces of attraction and easier will it be to liquefy that particular gas. So now with this idea in mind, let us take a look at the values. For O2, the value of A is 1.35, for N2 it is 1.38, for NH3, it is 4.16 and for CH4, it is 2.25. The greatest of them is 4.16, which belongs to what? NH3. So among these four gases, O2, N2, NH3 and CH4, it is NH3 that has a greater value of A. That means greater intermolecular forces of attraction and hence easily liquefiable. So the correct option is option C, which is NH3, and this is how you get to that answer.